candidly, like a lot of what we do is thankless, right? Mm -hmm. We are customer service for our business domains that we support, right? Sometimes it doesn't land well with the team. Sometimes it does, but a matter of fact, it's the reality of it. Um, so again, having it be thankless, right? Um, in, in some aspects, not all. Um, I just want to make sure that, you know, the team feels like they're getting the TLC and that I have their back and that they can come to me with any issue, either within the day to day, the nine to five, right? Or, hey, what's going on outside of work? Conversations are at the heart of everything we do. But how do you turn a conversation into revenue? Welcome to B2B EQ, a podcast from Unifor. I'm your host, Tim Harris. Join me as I interview business leaders and market makers to learn how to move deals forward, scale best practices, and establish relationships that create value and grow revenue. Let's get started. All right. Welcome to the B2B EQ podcast. I'm Tim Harris, and today's guest is a good friend of mine, accomplished and dynamic professional and a RevOps leader who, to me, exemplifies uh, teamwork and collaboration. He's seen the ins and outs of what it takes to make a, an organization successful at the highest levels, director of revenue operations at Paycor, Chris Veritas. Chris, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Tim. Good to see you again. Hey, great to see you, Chris. Well, I'm going to jump right into it. And yeah, the big question for B2B EQ is, in this B2B world, what is the one soft skill that creates the impact and really drives relationships and revenue? What are you seeing out there? I think um, the one thing that, that comes to mind is, um, and it, it, may, it may seem a bit cliche, is, is empathy. Um, you know, kind of reflecting back on on the importance of, of empathy for, for me as a leader um, in, in RevOps is, is, you know, really, really caring, um, not only about the team, but, you know, about the problem that the, the prospect has, right? And not, not just jumping in right into the pitch, right into the solution, right? Really kind of zooming out, um, understanding, you know, where, where the pain points are um, and, and truly caring about said pain points. You know, when I when I look at, you know, selfishly the the team and you know the culture I've I've worked to build over over the past you know two plus years, um, it's it's important in the sense that the team, you know, I, I have three three important pillars and I always are are the utmost important for me and and the team right health, home and welfare right you got to make sure you're healthy. And that goes everything from, you know, you taking care of yourself at the gym to also in between the years, right? Your mental health, mm -hmm. um, your home, you got to make sure your house is in order. Um, and then third is welfare, right? You got to make sure that, you know, you feel that you're being compensated well for the job that you're performing for whatever business domain that you're, you're in. Um, <clears throat> so I think, you know, for me, it, it is empathy and, and something that I, that I truly do practice. Um, for me, it's, it's very organic uh, in the sense, uh, just because I am. That's just how I'm wired, right? I, I, I do care. Um, well, and Chris, I want to yeah. double click in something a little bit yeah, because yeah. we talked before this and you said two things that, that Paycor does a, a pulse survey to really understand their employees, right? Keep mm -hmm. an idea of what's going on. And then um, I think you've made another comment of something called the trust tree. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about this because I want everybody to listen to make sure that they realize or that's listening to make sure, you know, this is truly like when you say empathy, you're somebody that I can stand and attest to that, that lives it. So yeah. tell me a little bit about those two things. Yeah. I think, um, you know, from, from like, we, we do like an anonymous survey. Um, I think it's, uh, twice a year, um, where it basically just pulses manager effectiveness, right? Does your manager have your back? Does he care? You know, is he engaged and things of that nature where, you know, me coming in, uh, to peak core, um, you know, my, my scores were, you know, selfishly through the roof. Right. Um, and then I was approached by some of our senior leaders to say, hey, man, like, what, like, what are you, what are you doing? What's the secret sauce? Um, and I was kind of, for, for once, you know, caught on my heels. I didn't have an answer. Right. Cause again, it, it just comes naturally to me. And, and, and reflecting back on my career um, and, you know, the different roles I've, I've held, um, you know, through the past 15 years, there were some instances where that wasn't the case. Right. Where, you know, the leader just, didn't care or worse, they pretended to care. Um, where, you know, again, some, you know, reflecting back, you know, I came into this role and, 
hell, like I lead how I would want to be led. Right. And I think I've been, you know, fortunate up in, in a position through my career to have instances where one, I was, I was led how I would want to be led. And, and the other, and the, and the inverse or the converse of that is just, I wasn't. Um, so, you know, something that, again, I, as I've had many leaders throughout my career, you know, some good and some bad, right? I think we all have. Um, it's something I pride myself on, um, you know, from, from, an, from a rev ops org to really, to really care because, you know, candidly, like a lot of what we do is thankless, right? Mm -hmm. We are customer service for our business domains that we support, right? Sometimes it doesn't land well with the team. Sometimes it does. But a matter of fact, it's the reality of it. Um, so, again, having it be thankless, right, um, in, in some aspects, not all. Um, I just want to make sure that, you know, the team feels like they're getting the TLC and that I have their back and that they can come to me with any issue, either within the day to day, the nine to five. Right. Or, hey, what's going on outside of work? Right. Like, you know, I, a part of the job as a leader is being a part time therapist, like it or not. That is a part of the role. Right. You know, there, it's not going to be rainbows and unicorns all day, every day. Right. So well, you have some stuff going on at home. There might yeah. be some stuff going on at work. Right. I just want to make sure that, um, you know, the culture that I've kind of uh, instituted over you know, the past two and a half years that my door is always open and you can come to me and bend my ear about any and all things regarding work or anything outside of work. Yeah, you think you hit on something right there. I was going to say, what are the ways to show that? How do we, how do we practice those soft skills or put them into action? Cause I think everybody, when you hear soft skills in business, especially in sales, it's like, well, I have a quarter to hit. I have numbers to hit. I have, I have stress on me and, and I've got to perform. So empathy can take a back seat to sure. necessarily getting my job done. However, I think we're also learning that through pandemic, through, you know, remote environments and, and hybrid environments and all of this change now, potentially some downturns in the market. Maybe empathy is top of mind. Maybe that's one of the skills that we build. And and so I ask you, you know, you had a, a, a discussion about your first thirty days at Paycor, and we were talking about that a little bit. Yeah. I think that was a great illustration of how you can put empathy into action. Maybe we can tell a little bit about just kind of how you came into Paycor, where yeah. you'd come from, and yeah. how you how you kind of acted those first thirty days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, prior to Paycor, I did a bit of a, a bit of a stint um, over at ADP, and I, I held. Wore many hats over there where I was brought in as a marketing analyst and still not sure what that role entails. It was kind of like a jack of all trades, like, you know, hey, like this is broken, fix it, or this, we need reports on this, whatever it may be. Uh, and the role evolved to, um, to kind of my passion, um, you know, technology, right? And the tech stack, uh, and the process improvements, um, all of those type of things. And then from there, it went into more of a, an enablement function, which I think at that point was relatively new, uh, to, to, Sales, right? Uh, enablement kind of, it was always just learning and, you know, the, the developers. There was never that, that middle function that made sure that adoption is tight, engagement is tight, right? We're getting, we're, we're, we're getting all the juice out of the stone from whatever tech we're bringing in. Um, and then from there, you know, candidly, I got a bit complacent. Um, you know, it was more of a box checking exercise and it wasn't in a good mental space. Um, and I was offered an opportunity to come over to Paycor. Um, and lead a team of very talented sales technologists. Um, and then, you know, from there, it was, again, just reflecting back on, you know, how I was, how I was led throughout my career, what worked, what didn't, uh, and then kind of instituted some of those best practices, uh, just around, you know, all things, um, all things, you know, not all things empathy, but, um, I am by nature and that's how I'm wired. I'm just an empathetic person. Now, do we have a job to do? Do we have goals to hit? Do we have KPIs to it? Absolutely. We do. Right. And that's on yeah. me to help guide the team to get to where they want to get, where they need to get to from a goal perspective. Now, is that, you know, Hey, X amount of projects, uh, a fiscal year. Is that X amount of cases? Is that getting you exposure to other areas of the organization to help grow your career? Is that mm -hmm. right? I, we could spend, you know, the next 45 minutes talking about that. Um, so it was very important for me, um, to make sure that I continue to, almost be like a broken record, right? Where, you know, career advancement and associate development um, is very important for me, right? Yeah. Selfishly, I would love everyone to be in the seat that they're in because they're just so talented and they're so great at what they do. But at the same point, the complacency part is real, right? You go through the same motions, you do the same thing for so long, you just 
be, get into a like a weird mental place, and then that has negative impacts on your work, negative impacts on your work, your work relationships in your home life, right? So just really keeping my finger on the pulse of where the team wants to go, and me as a leader, I have to ensure that I'm putting those stepping stones in front of them to get them to wherever they want to be, either within the organization or outside the organization. Well, and, and to establish that, to get there with a team, you come in, okay, you've built this team for the last two years. But one thing that, that you resonated, that you said with me is when I first came on board, the first 30 days were listening to us. That takes a lot of self-awareness and a lot of, uh, I guess you could say kind of self-control to sit yeah. back and say, okay, 30 days, I'm not going to make an impact. I know all these numbers need to be hit. I know all these KPIs are coming down on me and my team. Yep. But I'm just going to sit back and listen. How'd that go? Um, it was it was really hard because um, I am just like problem statement, solution design, problem statement, solution design. Like I just automatically kind of go there mm -hmm. um, where I just wanted to just not be brash and rush to a decision on whatever it may be or whatever the topic of discussion was or the problem that was in marketing or in our one of our channels or Salesforce or whatever it may have been. Um, but I really wanted to understand and really kind of stay six feet to 10 feet above everything and just get that bird's eye view and hear from different areas of the org and the stakeholders that we support, you know, what's going on in their world. Um, and then, you know, collectively call it the day 45, day 60, you know, you start to really start to parse these things, these problems or projects out identify the overlap, right? And then we're collectively solving a problem as opposed to just saying, problem solve, problem solve, problem solve, right? So it was, to answer your question, Tim, it was not easy um, to really kind of, you know, zip, zip the lips um, and just sit on my hands for, for 30 days. But um, I think it, uh, I think it paid dividends for, for real. Well, and, and going back into that, how at that point, do you build from there? So you listen for 30 days, mm -hmm. you acknowledge some of the challenges. What were some of those challenges? And then where do you go from there? Um, it was a lot of, a lot of the challenges process oriented, um, where we, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole, but, uh, yeah. process oriented. Um, and then from there, like understanding and, and a part of the listening tour is, is obviously seeing where the players fit on the field, right? Mm -hmm. Players being the team. Right. Where are the strengths? Where are the weaknesses? Where are opportunities for, for me to be able to challenge somebody to get out? To, I always say this, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, so there was two, twofold, right? Understanding, you know, where, where the problems stem from, right? And it was it, hey, is it just us acquiring tech debt from over, over the past two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years, right? I think every org kind of, kind of goes down that route. Um, but also understanding, you know, okay, if we have Jimmy over here and he's doing this, maybe he's the right resource to come over here and, and kind of start to dissect this problem, right? And then you naturally find where the players fit on the field. And you don't, I always use a soccer analogy, right? Like you, you can't have, you can't have five goalies on the field, right? <laughs> you can't, yeah. right? So it's really kind of, again, understanding where the strengths are and where the opportunities are. And then one, catering to those strengths and two, challenging those people that may be weak in other areas to take on additional assignments so that they're, they're starting to well, to, to round themselves out as far as getting comfortable in different areas of the organization and interfacing with different stakeholders. Really identifying like the players, the activities, like what levers you can turn and kind of where you can go. Now, how, how did that align to, you know, executive and, and kind of that managing and supporting the priorities of, of the other goals in, in the organization? Because you always have, I think in a RevOps position, like you said, your, your customer service for the sales team or your support for the sales team. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of conflicting and a lot of challenging priorities, a lot of, oh, I want a quick fix here, but that quick fix might have layers to it or ripple effects to the organization. Sure. Where did EQ kind of your self awareness and then the social awareness of the team? You're talking about finding the right players for new new projects. Where did that all come together? I think where what I always the, the north star for us is is our our OKRs right that are defined by um, our, our senior leadership team 
right? Mm -hmm. Is it booking growth? Is it retention? Is it, hey, we're going to launch seven new products this year? Is it, right? It could be a, a, you know, a, a ton of different things. Mm -hmm. So like when we ingest work or we look to prioritize the work, I think that's kind of our North Star where, hey, we understand that this is a pain point for you, right? And that whatever the body of work is, but explain to me how this has a dotted line or a side of line to the OKRs of the business, right? And that helps us feel like we are making an impact to those OKRs and we're not just doing things to do things, right? I think, you know, coming in, you know, the team is really good at what they do, really, really good at how they do it, but they weren't really great at answering the why, right? Where mm -hmm. we really kind of flipped the script, so to speak, um, and, you know, really kind of pivoted to really understand kind of what the work is. And if we ingest and deliver this work, like where, how does that going to, where is that going to make an impact? Um, so, you know, and it pays dividends in the sense that, you know, the team really feels that. And, and again, what we do day to day, keeping the sales en engine running is vital, right? We're keeping the lights mm -hmm. on, you know, our customers our clients, sales and marketing are set up for success. Great. That's one aspect. But the other aspect is, hey, at the end of the year, we can do a we can do a retro and say, hey, here are all the things we delivered. Here's the OKR, and here's the impact that these items had to that OKR. Right. So it's that feel good moment to say, man alive, like we actually did some great things last year and we helped get to that bookings growth goal. Or we got yeah. to we helped with the retention or we helped launch those pro pro those products. So I think, you know, kind of ha having that structure in place um, has that, you know, that, that, that feel good moment to say, man, we actually, we did, we did some great things and we actually helped the business get to their goals. Well, and, and to go back to, you said shiny tool syndrome or shiny object syndrome, right? And just the amount of tech debt that I think a lot of organizations, you know, yeah. right now we've seen pretty large layoffs in the tech industry and segment. We've seen a lot of consolidation tools are consolidating in solutions. We're talking earlier about just the, the consolidation of solutions and overlap. Mm -hmm. How, how did you map that harmonizing of technology? I liked how you said that to an OKR, but then also at the same time, like what were the solutions that you had developed internally? Because that's a problem. I mean, I don't know how many people I think, you know, Christmas was just back a little bit ago, like the Griswold big ball of, of lights that yeah. so many people get given and say, untangle this. Yeah. How did yeah. the team work? Yeah. I mean, um, I think we're still, I mean, that's, it's, it's going to be perpetual, I think, in that sense where we're just going to have to continue to, one, under, you know, ensure that we have best in class, um, which I think we do. Um, two is, you know, ensure that we don't have redundancy in the stack. And yeah. You know, obviously, with a lot of the technologies out there, right, a lot of them position themselves as enablement tools or sales enablement engagement tools. Um, you know, there there is overlap. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things where it there's no, and I wish there was, silver bullet, right, mm -hmm. to say, hey, technology X has all the bells and whistles. You bring them in, bolt them in, and you're off and running. Where, again, a, a big focus for me is harmonizing um, optimization and consolidation, um, yeah. is kind of where my, my focus areas are, um, for this, you know, the back half of our fiscal year. And, and as we kick off, um, 2023, um, that's a big, big focus area. And again, it's, it's easier said than done. Um, but at the end of the day, we want to make sure that, um, our sellers are set up for success. They know what needs to be used at what point, either pre funnel, mid funnel or post sale. Um, mm -hmm. and have those rules of engagement, but also eliminating the clicks and the navigation. So it's a balance, man. It really is. Um, and you know, us going through this, this exercise now, um, is, is going to one, yeah, uh, trim back the GL, uh, yeah. two, um, you know, and ensure that, you know, we, we are enabling our sellers to do what they need to do at the speed they need to do it. Um, and that's the kind of the name of the game, right? You know, seller optimization, efficiency gains, all of that, all of that stuff. And, uh, it, again, it's a big focus area for us. And again, to your point, it is a bit of a, bit of a rat's nest to, or spaghetti bowl to, to unwind, um, and you know, understands, you know, the rules of engagement and where, what needs to be used when and how. Well, and, and, and some of those unwindings, like you look at it and you go, okay, is this tied to an OKR? Yes. We need to make it simpler. Yes. We need to make it more efficient. 
Is it going to impact the business in that way this quarter? Is it going to be next quarter? And then you've also got all the people on board, like the change fatigue. I mean, how do you combat change fatigue within an organization? I think it's all about the sell. Yeah. Um, really is, is the messaging behind it. You know, I think, you know, and then if you have some change agents that you can get involved to help, to help drive the messaging and, and the why behind it, I think definitely helps. Right. Um, it's funny because we were on a, on a call earlier and, um, you know, we can, I, I can, we, it could be deaf by PowerPoint all day long, right? I could stack it, present for 90 minutes and will anything land? Maybe, maybe like the first two or three slides, right? And then maybe be absorbed right after that. I'm checked out. I'm doing email and pinging, whatever it is. Um, but when you get, when you have some change agents bought in, and helping deliver the message and the why. Like, I am an end user and this is great and here's why, right? That's gonna cascade itself throughout the organization as opposed to me barking through a deck, giving marching orders, you have to do this, this is a part of your day-to-day. -day. It's it's completely different, right? So yeah. I think it's, it's delegation, um, really. Um, yeah, change fatigue is real. And you know, especially with all the new tech that's coming out, right? Shiny new toy syndrome, right? Shiny new toy, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Right, bolt yeah. it in, walk away. Um, it's not the right, the right thing to do. And I think you know we're we're making strides to to ensure that we're really you know maximizing our vendor relationships and getting the most out of the out of out of the functionality they provide. Um, at the same time, you know, not looking to bring new tech in. Right, like yeah. let's let's man alive. Let's like let's just optimize the hell out of this. Make sure we're getting all the bells and whistles. Um, and then from there, you know, we can if. If needed, we go through the redundancy exercise uh, and all of that and see where we can trim some fat. But um, to answer your question, the change fatigue is real. And I think it's the messaging um, and the delegation to make sure that you have the right players on uh, uh, in, the, in the field delivering the message as to the why and the benefit, right? Instead of it coming from, you know, someone of, someone of, my, uh, of where I am in the organization. Well, and, and those change agents, right? Those people on the ground that I had a mentor one time, he said, you know, Tim, it's, it's not the amount of meetings you have. It's the amount of burgers and beers or the amount of walks or the amount of cups of coffee yeah. that you have with the key people. Absolutely. Those are the things that really make the impact so that when you're in that meeting, you're able to make the change. And I think it goes back to like what you were saying, like listening, empathy, creating trust. I mean, we, we focus so much, I think in the sales and marketing space of creating trust and, and connection with prospects, but yeah. how often do we focus on the internal teams? And like, that's from this interview, like that's what I'm learning is like, you're an internal change agent inside of Paycor and that internal change is what enables your sellers to make those connections. Yeah. And I think, you know, I like what you said there. I think, you know, again, you know, building, building a cultural, a cultural virtually is not easy. Right. Yeah. And that, I, that's what I was tasked with. Right. You coming mm -hmm. in, you're like, who, who is this dude? Right. Oh yeah. He, he came from, came from one of our competitors. Great. Like, you know, and like, you know, coming in and, and assuming that leadership role is there, there is a lot of uncertainty. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, you, when you go through the interview process, right, you go through a couple rounds of interviews, you talk for 30 minutes, you, you can't, you, you can't get to that by just talking to somebody on a zoom call for 30 minutes, you have to no. develop that. Right. And that was a big focus for me, not only going through the listening tour, hearing what problems are in the business across different areas, but hearing from the, from, from the individual contributors too, right? Like, Hey, what do you love about the job? What don't you like about the job? Right. And let's see what we can, what we can do to remove the, the loathe, if you will, off your plate. And I think that approach was like, man, this guy cares. Like, yeah, yeah, like this is a part of the job that I just do it because no one else can do it. And I just get it done. I have to do it week. I have to do it every week. I have to do it every month, whatever it is. It is what it is. But it's like, well, maybe there's opportunity to automate that part. Right. Maybe we can click into Sally over in this area to help automate it or just remove it from your plate completely. So I think that approach with the love loathe, um, you know, call it the first, first couple of months, help build mm -hmm. the trust because man, this guy cares, right? Um, and then from there, right, you know, building the culture virtually, you know, you were all stuck behind a 17 inch monitor or monitors, um, yeah. you know, getting out, bringing it, do getting in all hands. We, I do it every quarter. 
we get out, we, we, we do a brainstorming session. Um, we actually did a shark tank, uh, where everyone had to pitch their ideas. And then we had like a board to kind of say, we're, we like that idea. And then we actually operationalize it and deliver it against it. Nice. Um, but also like, man, let's go ax throwing. Let's go get a steak. Let's go have some beers, let our hair down. You know, maybe not me, but <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying, right? It's like, so yeah. it's like, you know, going out and, and, and having that, that buddy, buddy rubbing elbows, like, Hey, it's not all, it's not all work all the time. Like, let's go have some fun. Um, has helped as well. And we also do a lot of community give backs as well when we're out there, which is nice too. The team really loves doing that. So, um, that's huge. I think, yeah, I think, you know, that was, it was there, but you know, again, as we kind of shifted to a virtual first, um, environment, which we, we will be perpetually, um, it's, it's the utmost importance really to, to get out to headquarters, um, bring everybody in. Um, and especially a lot of, as the team grows, like people haven't really met everyone either. Um, so even just, you know, shaking a hand, giving a high five or, you know, sitting across with somebody and just being able to have that conversation outside of being on a Zoom call um, has has really gone a long way. That makes sense. Yeah. It, personal relationships are what drive everything forward. It leads me to say, like, you know, in RevOps, where do you see EQ's place? And and do you see this as being one of the the skills that's going to be nece- like a necessity for the future? Do you see this being more more needed in a virtual environment what's your take yeah um i would say it's i would say it's uh, no more is needed in in a virtual environment um but it is needed um in the sense that you know for me it's very organic um as i mentioned earlier where it's just i just care um and that's just how i was raised how i'm wired um but I would say it, it is important. Um, and it, one of this, one of those things where it's not, it's not a train to item. Like you, you just have to have it. Um, or maybe it is, maybe it is a train to item. I'm not, I don't know, but we're, we're going to have to have a, a few more debates on this. You know, my, my studies on it is that, that IQ is pretty much fixed, yes. right? Yeah. And that EQ is the one thing you've got control over. Like, right. Like your, your self-regulation, your ability to, to be more socially aware, manage relationships. So we're going to have to come back on this one, Chris. I'm going to have to have you back on the show because right. I, I, I'm an advocate to that. I want that growth mindset that I know you have on that one. I, would, I mean, I would love to see, like, I would love to see case studies on it. Um, yeah. You know, because, you know, again, in my career, I've come across people who just don't have it. They just, oh, right. Like, we, we all have. You know it. Yeah. You can call it out in a, you know, in, yeah. a, in a police lineup any day of the week. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah so it's, um, yeah, it's, that's interesting. I'd like to, I'd like to, to read up on that if you have some stuff for sure. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, enough about the challenges today. I think we've, we've all come to this conclusion that the virtual or hybrid is, is life at this point. And, and so what, you know, RevOps, all the different changes in technology and AI capabilities and not even technology, but what's exciting you about the future? I think uh, the e-com side, um, yeah. really is, you know, the DI, the BIY, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. I think, you know, there's been a lot of conversations, um, internally, and I've actually read up on a lot of, uh, um, a lot of this around, you know, just self-service, right. I think mm-hmm. it is big where, you know, even from like, you know, you go down the demo automation route, right. That's great. Um, you know, there's a company that has like a banner snatch offer where it's like, you literally just build your own adventure, so to speak, I cater the demo to exactly my needs. Um, as opposed to having someone to literally click through like a scratch org and say, Hey, like, look at this bell and whistle. This, look at the shine. This, this is shiny. Look how blue this is. Right. Um, I think it, it's really going down that route of, um, not, it's not necessarily speed to lead, but, uh, enabling, uh, prospects to kind of kick the tires by themselves and potentially, um, at some point by, um, you know, themselves and self implement, if you will. I think that's, you, that's where the future is going. Do you see that need for people to more materially experience it, touch it, feel it, get involved in the product, use it for a while before someone like yourself's jumping in and saying, Oh yeah, I'm going to put this org wide or even go into a proof of concept. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, 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 lo- I look back at, you know, how I would, I mean, let's put it this way. Um, I rarely call anyone, right? If I get a chat, I'm chatting yeah. with somebody. If I can take a free trial and kick the tires without talking to a human, I'm gonna, all my, I'm gonna do it, right? That's just, that's just me. That's my preference. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think you know, a lot of people want to eliminate the, um, you know, that layer and uh, just really get into whatever, whatever the, the product is, 
um, themselves, right? And and just you know the AI aspect is real too. Um, you know, forecasting intelligence um, that's big. Uh, that's that's pretty hot right now. Um, but outside of that, I think you know the the BIY is is I think where the future is going. That's awesome. I, I agree. I, I can't say enough about product led growth and kind of some of those motions and, and some of the different ways. I'm like you. If I can jump in, try it, play around with it, I, I'm always I'm always having more fun that way. So, right. you know, I, I feel blessed in, in the last 30 minutes to get to learn from you a little bit, but I'd love to learn a little bit more and let the audience learn a little bit more about who you are. So, you know, take me back. Take me back in time to, to little Chris a little bit. Now, you know, tell me where'd you come from and, and, and what got you here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was born and raised um, in uh, Bergen County, New Jersey. Uh, lived there, obviously, for a while. I bounced over to Hoboken, um, put a little stint in there. Um, from there, I, I moved out um, to the Lehigh Valley. At that point, I was uh, in a relationship. And the silver lining to the relationship was all well, the relationship dissolved. Um, but the silver lining was the career, the career start at, uh, at ADP, um, nice. in, in our Allentown headquarters. Um, from there, obviously I put a, put a bit of a stint in over there and, um, you know, about, about two, yeah, almost uh, two and a half years been over at PCOR. Um, and, uh, it's been great. I think, you know, they're growing like crazy. Um, I, I you obviously see like the PAC 12 sponsorship, um, was a big win, um, and we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity coming out of that. Uh, Paycor Stadium. Paycor Stadium. Yep. I mean, you know, I'm a Giants fan, as you can see. But you know, if I had to pick an AFC team, it's got to be it's got to be Hude, right? Um, <laughs> so that's, that's a big deal. Um, you know, we're looking to, I believe, uh, have our sales kickoff at the stadium um, this year. Um, wow. Yeah, and, and we're just continuing. We had our kickoff down. At, uh, we we're out. We we're on the field at Cowboy Stadium having dinner for our sales kickoff last year. So point being is that the business um, is continuing to look for these um, investment opportunities to help grow, grow, to help our OKRs, candidly, yeah. right? Our, our growth. Um, we went public back in, uh, in July um, and, you know, we've been, we've been kicking ass since. So um, it's, a, it's a really exciting time to be at Paycor. We're hiring like crazy. Um, yeah, I have a couple open recs on my um and my team. Obviously, sales is we're looking to expand and really own our tier one markets. So there's a lot of opportunity for you know the operational side as well as our sales sales uh, org, um, which is which is great. But um, yeah, back to me as far as you know what I like to do on uh you know in my abundance of free time. Um, <laughs> I, I have a, a beautiful wife, Carrie Ann. I like to spend a lot of time with uh, two dogs. A 17 year old cat, which we had a couple of vet scares of, as of late. Um, and, uh, you know, the old Bed Bath and Beyond, Sam's Club, Costco runs on the weekends. Um, you know, I love to go snowboarding, hiking, walking with the dogs. Um, big bourbon, aficionado. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's all right. Cool. What's your favorite thing at Costco? And then I want to go back into this Paycor IPO because you glazed over that real quick. And I, I want to hear a little bit more about we, that. We can reflect back on that. Um, I'm sorry. What was, what was the question? One more time. First, I, I mean, come on. You just said Costco trip. So, what's your what's your favorite buy at Costco? It depends. Um, I always go for the black and white cookies in the in the um, uh, bakery area. I always go to Joey. I think Joey and Joey's is the brand name drop. Uh, okay. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Um, but sure. no, they're uh, that's my favorite. Um, and then you know the Costco chicken. I mean, come on, man. Who doesn't? You can't beat it. You can't. Yeah, that's true. I hammer keep one. the household going. Yeah, hang on. I hammer one of those on the way home. <laughs> uh, and you got to hit the candy aisle. Um, that's why my wife doesn't like to take me because uh, a hundred dollar Costco run turns into a five hundred dollar Costco run really quick when I join. So four hundred dollars in candy working yeah. from home. I get oh, it. Yeah. Uh-huh. You, you bet. You bet. <laughs> so take me back to this uh, this Paycor IPO. I, I've got a number of listeners and some yeah. at, at publicly traded companies, but many that you know, like myself, we join organizations that are pre IPO. That's the, that's the dream of most of those technology companies. Yeah. So um, what was it like? And, and what do you think from a, from a sales and rev ops place? Like what, what helped get you there? Yeah, I think, um, it, it was interesting because it was kind of like, you know, um, like a rumor going around, oh, we're going, right here we're going public, 
her going yeah. public. And it's like, oh, wow. Okay, that's kind of cool. And I'm like, eh, 18, 24 months, right? Got to file the paperwork. But all of a sudden, the, I forget the name of the form, I think S1 was, was filed or whatever it may have been. And mm -hmm. um, then we were at sales kickoff. Um, this was in Orlando. And I remember I was traveling up to um, one of our vendors up in Tampa after sales kickoff. And I was speaking with, um, you know, one of my colleagues. I'm like, wow, like, you know, because they were hyping like the IPO up at, at sales kickoff. I'm like, Man, this is really exciting. Like, I didn't, I had no idea that we were, this was even a thought when I had started, right? Um, well, I knew we were eventually going to get there, but not as, not as, uh, as fast as we did. And I went to him, I'm like, hey, like, that was really cool at sales kickoff. I'm like, when do you think we're, uh, we're going to, you know, IPO? And he goes, if I had to throw a dart at it? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, Wednesday. And I'm like, like Wednesday, like five days from now, Wednesday. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, dude, I'm flying out to Manhattan. We're ringing that. We're ringing the bell at NASDAQ. And I'm like, man, I'm like, are you serious? I didn't believe him. I just didn't believe him. And then sure as hell, um, I believe it was that Tuesday or Wednesday, um, you know, our, our, our EC and a handful of um, our senior leaders were at, I unfortunately wasn't able to go. I wasn't invited, but it's all no different. But, um, you know, a handful were out there and they're ringing the bell and, you know, they're, they're taking a, a boat trip around Manhattan celebrating. And, uh, it's, uh, it's been a wild ride ever since. I think, you know, we're, we're doing, we're doing well compared to, um, the other like tech companies that, um, had IPO'd in, in 2021 and, um, mm -hmm. you know, sky's the limit, man. So it's, uh, it's really, really exciting. And then from there, a PAC 12 sponsorship, and then from there, Paycor stadium naming rights. Mm -hmm. So I keep on asking like, what's next? Like, yeah. are you going to, you know, take out some real estate on the moon? Like it's, uh, <laughs> how do you keep on topping yourselves here? Like what, you know, again, it's, it's, it's really exciting. Um, you know, we are busy, um, busier than a, a beaver with two sets of teeth. That's a Pennsylvania, uh, analogy for you. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, it, it's, it's a good time to be at the company. Uh, again, we're growing like crazy and, uh, we're, we're doing well. So it's, it's, it's awesome. Nice. What were some of the leading up to it? Like, as you reflect back, what are some of the things in the RevOps space or, or some of the things you were working on that you feel were really like those, those core OKRs that got you to that place? I just think it's just our, our, our bookings. Um, yeah. You know, we, uh, we continue to grow over our number um, and, you know, finding creative ways to get there with some certain initiatives and projects that we've been running. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just been, you know, again, like then that, that's where I always kind of hit the time, hit the pause button with the team. I'm like, you guys were instrumental. You may not feel yeah. it, right? You yeah. may not feel like you were a part of this, but you were a vital part to get us there. You guys kept the engine running. You kept the gears greased, right? We got stuff done. So um, it was, I can't, I can't, you know, call something out specifically, Tim. Um, that would say, Hey, this is what helped us get there. But I think collectively everything that we do day to day, uh, week to week, month to month, quarter to quarter, um, directly had an impact on getting us to the IPO. Well, and, and, and not to make a bad football reference, but it's, it's like everybody who helps you from the stadium crew to the trainers, to whatever else, to let those few athletes that get out on field actually play at their best everybody gets that, that Super Bowl ring, right? And I think that's so critical in a RevOps role, in an enablement role. Yeah. Like I love seeing the, the teamwork and the fact that, hey, you're able to pull a team together and look, you made a direct impact in bookings. Yeah. And that you're looking at bookings. You're not even looking at like, oh, well, we had a 20% efficiency gain and that led to this. No, bookings are what matter from all aspects. Of yeah, the absolutely. Um, awesome. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, you know, I, I am, you know, self-reflecting, right? I am blessed, right? Um, to have the opportunity to really lead this team, um, make an impact, um, and, and live well, right? I think, you know, going back to what I mentioned earlier, like, you know, the home health and, and welfare and, you know, knock on wood, um, I think I'm, I'm in a really good spot with all of those. So just got to keep on, keep, keep on keeping on here. I love it. Well, Chris, you're one of my favorite people to see when I'm out on the East Coast. But for those that uh, don't know you as well, uh, where can people find you? What's the best place to to connect? Yeah, um, I do have a, a Twitter handle. I don't. I, I've been slacking on it to be honest. But um, yeah, I'm at, at Veritas. 
um, on Twitter, um, Instagram, if you want to follow uh, my dogs, uh, at Veritas, and then also on uh, on LinkedIn. No Facebook. Perfect. Awesome. Well, Chris, I got I to gotta say thank you so much for coming on. I know you're a busy man, and uh, Paycor is lucky to have you in the RevOps uh, role. And uh, again, thank you to all of our listeners for, for tuning in to B2B EQ. Um, we will have the show notes and all of the details for Chris, as well as some links to Paycor and his LinkedIn down below. Um, and I just got to say, if you're listening and you enjoyed either the black and white cookies from Costco or some great insights on the RevOps side, let us know. Smash that like button. Um, log in next week with us and uh, tell someone in, in revenue about this podcast. Um, Chris, thank you again and uh, talk soon. Have to be here. Thanks, man. We hope you enjoyed this episode of B2B EQ. Be sure to rate, subscribe, and follow the podcast for more exciting insights. To learn more about the value of EQ and the technology powering today's conversations, visit us at unifor.com.